Hey guys, welcome to lesson three of our immigration unit. Let me go ahead and share our vocab words with you. Okay, so our first vocab word is customs and it's established or traditional way of doing things. Um, this picture here kind of shows you the Red Dragon, um, the Chinese New Year. They always have a parade, and um, the Red Dragon is always in their parade. It's just their tradition of celebrating their New Year. Then we have ethnic. It's a characteristic of a particular group of people who share a common language and national, religious, or cultural customs. Then we have hostile which is unkind or unwelcome behavior. Newcomers, people who are new to a place or a group. And then we have traditional, customary or long established describing something that has been done in the same way over a long period of time. So here, like with Thanksgiving, a lot of people have turkey for their dinner. It's a traditional, um, a traditional dinner to have on Thanksgiving. Okay. Let me go ahead and pull up our pictures. So while I read today's story, um, see if you guys can listen for those vocabulary words. All right, here we go. Okay, so this story is called Life in the City. Maria woke to the sound of a voice outside her window calling. Buy my fresh fruit, good to eat. Crunchy apples, red and gold, sweet cherries, strawberries. Buy my fresh fruit, good to eat. Then, like the different colored yarns her grandmother knitted together to make a scarf, the sound of the city began to weave together one after another. First, Marie heard the clear ringing of bells hanging around the neck of the goats that provided goat's milk to some of the neighbors' homes. Then she heard a creaking sound she knew belonged to Mr. Jacoby's wagon. He delivered cow's milk and cheese from his dairy across town. Now Mr. Duplass, a jolly Greek man, started calling, knife sharpener, knife sharpener, axes, scissors, shovels, picks, blades and handles I can fix. Marie liked the grinning little man. He was built as solidly as a bull and he walked the city streets pushing a cart that held his sharpening stone and tools. Maria awakened her two younger sisters who shared the bed with her, then crossed the little room in two steps to wake her baby brother who was still small enough to sleep in an open drawer of an old wooden dresser. Everybody up, she said. What do you guys think about this? Their apartment they're living in, because you knew it was an apartment, because she's up high in the air, and there's lots of apartments in this area, and she's in a city. So I'm thinking either the apartment is very small, and they all have to share a room, or what are your guys' thoughts? Marie's day was just beginning, but Papa would have already left in the dark hours before dawn for his job at a mattress factory. Mama would have woken up with him to brew his coffee and cook his breakfast. As he started down the seven flights of wooden stairs, she would have handed him his metal lunch pail with the sandwich she had made for him. Our new home is not like our quiet little village in Italy, Marie thought for the thousandth time as she helped her youngest sister and brother get dressed. So many people here, so much noise, and Papa has to work so hard for so many hours every day in that smoky factory. Still, she thought, at least Papa has a job. Back home, there were no jobs, very little to eat, and the floors in our house were made of dirt. Here in America, there is plenty to eat, and we live in a good building. I wish there were not so many people crowded in with us, though. However, I like having so many friends, and I enjoy the city, but sometimes I would like it to be quiet the way it was in our little village in Italy. 
but I am very thankful to be here in America where there are so many opportunities. So guys, how do you think Marie is feeling about her new life in America? What do you guys think? Marie's life was typical of lives of the millions of immigrants who came from Europe and Asia to the United States for better job opportunities in the 1800s and the early 1900s. The largest wave of or group of immigrants, 23 million people, came, from the, came to the United States between 1880 and 1920. Immigrants from Europe entered through Ellis Island in New York Harbor and many stayed near the harbor living in or around New York City on the East Coast. Other immigrants moved away from New York to join friends or relatives who had already, who were already living farther north in Boston or South Philadelphia or west in the great cities of the Midwest, such as Chicago, Detroit, or Cleveland. 23 million people, that is a large number of people. There's more people than that that than the entire state of Florida today. Isn't that crazy? And when it says they lived along the East Coast, that basically means they lived along the um, sea or the ocean. They kind of lived right there where the Atlantic Ocean was. And look at this photograph. So look at this photograph compared to this one. This is actually a real photo so this is really immigrants coming over. Would look at this is all they're bringing with them to America. Isn't that crazy, guys? Meanwhile, Chinese and other immigrants from Asia came to the west coast of the United States to the city of San Francisco, passing through the Angel Island Immigration Center in San Francisco Bay. There were fewer Asian immigrants, so the immigration center on Angel Island was not as large as the immigration center on Ellis Island in New York Harbor. Still, there was a steady stream of immigrants and these Chinese and other Asian immigrants settled in cities along San Francisco Bay or moved inland away from the ocean. They would often stop in the mining camps of the California mountains in search of gold joining other gold seekers from across the United States and from other nations around the world. After finding no gold, many Chinese went to work building the railroads that would soon join the east and west coasts of the country. Um, so many of the Asian immigrants were coming to California. Remember when we learned about westward expansion and we learned about the expansion of the railroad? We talked about how many of the Chinese immigrants were a lot of the workers on the railroad out there. I think it's just a little bit smaller so you can see all of it. Although many immigrants settled in the countryside as farmers or villagers, most of them made their homes in the big cities of America. Many immigrants settled in these large cities because there were more jobs there. Earlier immigrants remembered the hardships and difficulties they had experienced settling in a new country and often helped the newcomers to find jobs. City immigrants worked in factories, making everything from shirts and dresses to the buttons and buckles that closed them, from small wooden picture frames to huge wooden railroad cars from loaves of bakery bread to huge ovens in which to do the baking. Some owned their own businesses, little shops and stores that sold produce to eat or goods from their home countries. Others sold items from carts or wagons, which they pushed themselves or had horses pull for them. So we heard the word newcomers, remember someone that's new to the country, there were many hardships. What were some of the hardships? So look at here's a picture of people selling things in carts up and down the street, people in their apartments. Looks like women here at a factory working on sewing, maybe making shirts or dresses.
Wherever they came from or wherever they settled, the newcomers found other immigrants who had brought with them the customs, the food, and the languages of their home countries. Many immigrants who lived in the cities gathered in ethnic neighborhoods with other immigrants from their native countries. People would say, that's little Italy over there, or this neighborhood is called Chinatown. Germans, Poles, Italians, and Irish, African Americans, European Jews, Japanese, Norwegians, and many other groups had what they thought of as their own parts of town. They felt at home there. Cafes and restaurants served their traditional foods made with old and familiar recipes. Crowded apartments were decorated with familiar items from their home, and all around them they heard the languages from their homelands. By living close together, immigrants not only felt more at home, they were able to support each other in finding jobs and learning English. Immigrants felt safer and more comfortable in these neighborhoods, but they would often have to travel outside parts of, of town to work and live. Sometimes when they left their neighborhoods and met someone from other places, they learned from one another and enjoyed it. Sometimes they met only unfriendliness or even hatred. Immigrants discovered that some people from outside their community could often be hostile towards them because they were different. Some Americans believed that immigrants were coming into the country and taking their jobs. However difficult their new lives in America could be, the lives of many immigrants improved when they moved to and settled in the United States. The longer immigrant families lived in the United States, the less hostile hostility they felt. Over time, children of immigrants felt even less hostility as their children's children, and in time, they were accepted as Americans, just like everyone else. All right, guys. So, remember at the beginning, we heard about a little girl named Marie. What were some sounds that Marie heard in the beginning of the story? Remember, she heard the farmer calling out for fresh, fresh fruit. She heard the cowbell on the goat. What else does she hear? She heard the man's wagon that was selling milk and cheese from his dairy. She heard the, um, the, the little Greek man calling out to sharpen knives. How did Marie feel about living in a city? Remember, she was from Italy and she lived in the country in Italy. How did she feel about moving to America and living in a city? What were some of the pull factors? So what were some of the things that, um, the pull factors that brought immigrants from Europe and Asia to the United States. So what was pulling them to the United States? You guys, what do you guys think? Opportunity for a better life, more job opportunities, the possibility of wealth or becoming rich, and then welcoming ethnic neighborhoods. So right here, this is probably an ethnic neighborhood here. People all that came from the same country were living all kind of close together. They felt comfortable. All right, guys. So that is our story today. I will talk to you guys and bring you more of our immigration unit tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.